right, what's going on, you guys? Nick here with Nick Strength and Power. I've got a couple of interesting stories for you guys today. The first story that I've got for you guys today is going to be the results of the 2022 Mr. Big Evolution Pro, the Portugal Pro, which was this past weekend. So the results were a little bit surprising to me, uh, at least, in open bodybuilding. So the winner of that show was Andrea Presti, and it was really <laughs> the battle of the Andrea. So Andrea Presti and Andrea Musi, um, they were the top two. They were in a call-out together. Um so Andrea Musi was second. Peter Clancier ended up in third. Tim Budashim ended up in fourth. And Vlad Suharuchko ended up in fifth. I was a little bit surprised by Vlad's placing. I thought he looked pretty good based on what I saw. But again, this was kind of another show. There wasn't a live stream for this one, so we had to kind of wait for the HD pictures to come out or look at like cell phone footage. So that's kind of why I waited till today because I didn't see any really good pictures. I saw some good pictures today, and I definitely understand now why Andrea Presti won. I think this is probably the best package he's brought to date. I think he looked incredible here. I think some of the other shows where he didn't place as well, he was a little bit off. Um, that one show where he was runner-up, I thought he looked really good. Um, but I think some of those shows he just came in off. But this one, I think he really nailed it and deserved the victory here. Um, as you can see in these HD stage shots, the pose down between him and Andrea Musi. I just thought it was kind of cool that both of these two guys, they were initially left off the initial competitor list. So when we got the when we got the names at first, they weren't even on it. And then they were added, these two guys. And then they got a call out, the two of them, just one and two. And both their names are Andrea, which I thought was interesting. But basically not very surprising as far as who was in the top five. I was just a little bit surprised of the order of the top five. So Peter Clancier, Tim Budishim, and Vlad Suaruchko. Um, those are the other guys that basically we've been talking about the past couple weeks leading up to the show. Um, and those were the guys that wound up being top finisher. So congratulations to Andrea Presti. He will be going to the 2022 Mr. Olympia. Um, and I will say, I think the most impressive part about his physique to me is his upper body width and his shoulders. I think his shoulders look insane. They look like, like jack-o'-lanterns. They look, they look crazy. So yet another name added to the Olympia lineup. And speaking of the Olympia, we got an interesting uh, video on the Olympia TV YouTube channel um, with Dan Solomon. So in this video, Tarek El Gundi is talking to Dan about... Um, Derek Lunsford. So Derek Lunsford, as you guys know, he recently did that guest posing at the Pittsburgh Pro with a bunch of open guys. Nick Walker was there. Brandon Curry was there. Um, and you also had Hunter Labrada there. And in that lineup, even though he's a 212 Mr. Olympia champion, which is like 50 pounds less than some of these guys, he was really holding his own on stage. And then it came out after that guest posing that he actually weighed like 260 pounds. So the gist of this video that Dan put out talking about Derek to me the whole point of this video was to hint at the possibility of Derek getting a special invitation to the Olympia which I think would be interesting and and kind of what Dan said is we're presented with a health issue so Dan kind of beat around the bush and didn't really answer the question directly as to whether or not Derek would get a special invitation to the Open Olympia but he basically said look if Derek was really that heavy at that Pittsburgh pro guest posing and he looked as good as he looked against those open guys. And I think Dan even said something to the effect of he thinks he would be a top finisher in the men's open Olympia. If if he weighed 260 at that guest posing, and he's going to have trouble making weight for 212, which he already has struggled to get under that weight cap, Dan said he was concerned that, you know, what is he going to have to do to his body from a health standpoint to get under 212 that rapidly between now and December to go from 260 to under 212 to make that weight, and then he's going to have to carb up and fill out after that. That kind of a yo-yo diet going going up and down like that. Dan said it's unhealthy and it's risky. So Dan said, what are we going to do if Derek doesn't make weight? Or he says he doesn't want to try to make weight. He said, what are we going to do, just not have him at the Olympia? That wouldn't be good. So he basically suggested that if it came down to that, if Hani or Derek said, look, Derek's not going to be able to make weight for 212, he wants to do open, so if it came down to the choice of Derek's not going to do, he's not going to do 212, he can't make weight, or he's not going to compete at all. It sounded to me like Dan was suggesting in this video that if that were the scenario, he would want him to compete in open and that the special invitation would probably be on the table. That's what I got from this video. But again, it was a very roundabout way of talking about this topic, which it, it's that's Dan Solomon's style. That's what Dan does. And I was kind of thinking something along the same lines. I mean, if he was really as heavy as he says he was and as Hani says he was at that Pittsburgh Pro, that's a lot of weight that he has to drop to make that 212 cutoff. And honestly, if you look at the pictures from Pittsburgh, he he wasn't like crazy big. He wasn't overweight. He wasn't fat. He had visible abs. He had cuts in his quads. So where is that weight going to come from? It's not just going to be water weight. It's not just going to be fat. 
I mean, that's going to come. That's going to be actual muscle tissue that's coming off for him to get under 212. I would imagine, as lean as he was at close to 260, that'd be a pretty pretty big ask for him to cut. And then that was kind of the other thing that I was thinking about was if he does decide that he's going to do men's open, he kind of makes he kind of needs to make that decision in the very near future because he's going to have to either a do a show in open like we saw Sean Clarita do, like we saw Angel Calderon do. Both those guys qualified for both categories. They came from 212. They both did open shows. They both won open shows, so they're qualified for both Olympias. Um, but Derek would essentially have to do that if he wanted to do open, if he didn't get the special invitation. So this is a conversation um, that I think needs to be happening probably now between Dan and Hani or Dan and Derek. Whatever the plan is, I would think now would be the time to be formulating it because if if, there, if he doesn't get a special invitation, he kind of needs to know that because he's going to have to compete and qualify. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Derek Lunsford in open or 212. Do you think he would do well in open? And also... The whole special invitation thing, every year, there's always a little bit of controversy with who they give it to. I mean, keep in mind, they gave it to Rami. They gave Rami the qualification the year that Rami won the Olympia. And there's been other controversial ones in the past, Kevin Lavroni back in 2016. So you've had these these kind of Olympia special invites that sometimes people love them, sometimes people hate them. How would you feel if they did extend the invitation um, to Derek Lunsford to compete in men's open bodybuilding? Personally, I wouldn't be upset at that. On the other hand, I would also like to see Derek compete in an open show prior to the Olympia and actually prove that he would be a top Olympian by winning an open show from, you know, from being a 212 guy. I think that would be um, that kind of momentum would be cool as well. But personally, I wouldn't have any problem with them extending him the special invitation to compete in men's open. Uh, but let me know what you get you guys think in the comment section down below. Now, next up in the news, Brett Wilkin. He did a guest posing this weekend where I thought he looked pretty he looked pretty big for Brett. We already saw the transformation that he made between his last pro show before the Arnold and then the prep for the Arnold and then his package that he brought to the Arnold Classic. He put on a ton of size for that. Um, I think over 10 pounds of stage weight is what he weighed, the difference between the two shows. And it looks like as far as this offseason is concerned, he's taking a very similar approach. He looks. This is the biggest I think I've ever seen Brett look, and I think he looks pretty impressive here. But I think that's the thing that Brett needs to be careful of in the future because I think the reason why he didn't place as well at the Arnold as I think a lot of people were expecting him to place, I think, A, he was losing control of his midsection. I think he was spilling over a little bit, and his conditioning was off. And I don't know if that was because the goal for that Arnold Classic was for him to come in bigger than ever, but he lost a little bit of that like dryness and crispness, crispness that he had at that Chicago Pro um, from last year when he was uh, going head-to-head -head with Hunter Labrada. He lost a little bit or a lot of that for the Arnold Classic. Even though he was bigger, I don't think it was worth it with what he sacrificed to get there. So that's the only thing with him coming in bigger, him looking you know bigger than ever in the offseason, is hopefully the next time we see Brett on stage, the conditioning is better with that added size. Um, and, and in that case, I think he's going to be very dangerous. I mean, if he had that same conditioning with this much size, that, that Chicago pro conditioning with this much size, I think he would be extremely dangerous at any pro show that he decides to do. So shout out to Brett Wilkin. Now, next up in the news... Antoine Vaillant. So Antoine, in a lot of these recent updates that he's been posting, he looks like he's in really good shape. And his coach, Dorian Hamilton, he posted something like with the caption that he was beach ready now or getting ready for the beach. And you can clearly see it looks like he's prepping for a show. I mean, he's in pretty good condition. And I think that would surprise a lot of people because A, he hasn't said he's doing a show. And B, he just had that health scare recently with his heart when he got the calcium score test done. But I've got a hunch. I've got a theory. The Vancouver Pro is right around the corner. I think Antoine is doing that show. He's from Canada. I think it's a good fit for him. It looks like he's prepping for a show. I, I think it's a safe bet looking at these updates, if they are recent, that Antoine's going to hop in a show in the very near future. And I have a feeling it's going to be that Vancouver show, the one that Ian's doing. So even though he hasn't said anything about it, don't be shocked if we see Antoine on stage in the very near future. And the final story that I have for you guys today, this is just kind of a side note that I wanted to add to the uh, previous comments about the Mr. Big Evolution, a.k.a. the Portugal, Portugal Pro. They had this rotating stage, and Morgan Asti is the one that posted this. And again, they didn't have a live stream, so not a lot of people m may have seen this unless you were actually there in attendance. But they had like this circular rotating platform stage which I thought was pretty unique. So they had all the guys stand like on the outer rim of that stage and they had it spin around 
like for the crowd to showcase each guy. And I thought that was a unique addition to the show that you don't see anymore. I think they did something like that at the Olympia once or twice, like in the 90s. But the rotating stage thing is just something you don't usually see. So I was kind of curious to get your guys' feedback on that. What do you what do you think about that? We've seen a lot of uh, a lot of discussion about maybe having more uniformity amongst these pro shows as far as the the stage design, the background, the lighting, all that stuff has kind of been in the conversation lately. What do you guys think about these shows that kind of go outside of the norm and do things like this? Do you think it's a good thing? Do you think it's a bad thing? Do you think it enhances the experience? Again, you know, there wasn't a stream for us to watch, so I don't know. You know, what the what the purpose of it was besides uh, pleasing the audience. But what do you guys think about the rotating stage thing? Let me know in the comment section down below. That's going to wrap it up for the video today, guys. I hope you did, in fact, enjoy it. Please give it a thumbs up if you did enjoy it. Please subscribe if you have not subscribed yet already. Click that bell notification icon if you haven't clicked it to be notified every time I upload. And as always, love you guys. Appreciate you guys. Nick Strength and Power signing out.